coming to green to start the bush light clash at the Coliseum. And we are green. Boy, Reddick with a good drive off on the outside. No advantage there. Cobbush roughs him up just a little bit. They stack up at the back of the pack as Reddick tries to get the lead. Nothing there. Cobbush the leader. Reddick drops in. Then Haley, Logano, and Suarez. Byron to the inside on the 14. That battle for sixth place. Starting to see right here, Chase Briscoe on the outside. You need to get down. Everybody's single filing up. If he gets there, you can go to the back. Kyle Busch pushed up in turn one, and Tyler Reddick got inside. Let's see if he can maximize that inside lane. Kyle Busch isn't a guy that's just going to give it away, but early in this thing, 150 laps on this short track. Got to be patient early in this race. Leaders are going to be coming. And her teammates side by side. Larson takes the spot from Byron. As Corning California's Tyler Reddick for Richard Childress Racing has his Camaro out in front of the Camry of Kyle Busch. Bush under pressure. The 31. Haley looking to the inside where he has room, but not quite the speed to get alongside Kyle Busch. Me through what Tyler Reddick is thinking right here. Obviously got a pretty good pad in the lead, but he's starting to catch that last car on the lead lap. How is he going to navigate around these guys to keep that separation between him and second place? Well, the first thing with the gap that he has to Kyle Busch, it's not enough for me to feel comfortable. So what I'm doing as a driver, if I'm leading the race right now, I see the lap traffic. I'm also seeing Kyle in my mirror. I'm watching to see where these lap cars are, are running on the racetrack, trying to figure out how I'm going to get, when I get to them, where am I going to go to try to not break my momentum. So but here's Reddick into lap traffic. He was up against the bumper of Bubba Wallace there. He has a pretty good advantage, four car lengths, but Bubba doesn't want to give up the bottom. And he shouldn't. No. <laughs> Make him work for it. Bumper. And three wide right in front of him. That is not what you want to see. Oh, Denny Hamlin just drilled Ricky Stenhouse to try to make some room, but Hamlin ended up the worst for it. Here's the leader inside of Hamlin and Martin Truex. And I don't think Tyler really intended to send it in quite that deep, but I think the guys checked up in front of him and he was already committed. So Hamlin a lap down, Reddick underneath the 47 of Stenhouse and looking over provisional starter Martin Truex. Big gap in front of that group. And the thing I like, I like watching behind Kyle Busch, Justin Haley. This kid has been fast every time he has been on the racetrack this weekend. And he's just matching pace with Kyle Busch right now. After third place, pretty good gap back to Joey Logano in fourth and a bigger gap back to Kyle Larson in fifth. So the top three under no pressure. Complete, here are today's fourth performance track facts. The Coliseum Open 1923. It's a national and California historic landmark. They've hosted the Olympics, the World Series, and Super Bowls. What a wonderful place to suddenly have a race. This track constructed in a little less than three months' time. It'll all be torn down over the next two weeks. But what a show today. I want to give props to something that we're seeing, too. A brand-new race car, next-gen race car in NASCAR. Hats off to these guys. Not really any big problems whatsoever. A little bit of left front wheel lockup that we've seen, Tony, but so far, so good. Had some concerns about temperature and saw some brake fade early and some tests that we had early on in the season. So far, so good here tonight. So makes the passing here even that much more difficult because they're so equal. So Tyler's been doing a good job of keeping... Tyler's been doing a good job of being patient here, so looks like we're going to have our first restart. We'll see how that goes. All right, I'll let you get back to your driver. Ricky Thank you. Stenhouse has spun at turn four. Meanwhile, Denny Hamlin was circulating in the high groove off pace. I think he was overheating. I, I saw water pushing up out of it. <laughs> There's Hamlin. No apparent damage on the front of that car, but... He's going to roll into the infield where teams can service these cars. Got a little bit of help in that left rear, which I think we'll see a lot of that later on in the race. But, oh, when we were watching. 
Well, yeah. were, might have been oil. Something was coming out of that right front fender well. You can see. Thanks, Jamie. On the choose, third place Joey Logano has gone up uh, to the outside of the front row as the 14 oh, heads no. for the infield. 14 pulled off. Fourth place. Chase Briscoe, what happened? No drive. Six here, but they do nothing. It made all kinds of rattling noise when I hit the gas. Uh. And now Tyler Reddick is down on the apron. A race leader has come to a halt. What is happening? Regan? Mike, the A-car, Tyler Reddick just pulled down to the inside of the racetrack, believes he broke the transaxle on that race car. That's what makes the car drive forward, basically. Same well, exact thing that the 14 just radioed. On the, so Kyle Busch's Toyota with Joey Logano's Ford come out of turn four, and they approach the Geico restart zone. And Bush is on it. We're back to green. Kyle Bush is going to try and give the field the goodbye look right here. Joey Logano did a great job. There was a very, very small hole for him to get in down that back stretch ahead of Kyle Larson. Took advantage of it. Now it's Justin Haley in the 31 that's caught on the outside. As Kyle Larson has moved up to third. Now Haley gets down. Daniel Suarez on the outside now against the 43 of Eric Jones. Haley for third. Takes it away from Larson on the inside. Yeah, I see him with the ability to get in. Not only does he get in deeper, he can get off the corner really strong. A lot of forward bite. Forward dig. Around in turn four goes Chase Elliott. And that's caution flag number two after 65 laps. Coming off turn two, he and Ryan Blaney were battling for seventh place. Blaney in the 12. Gives him a little shot there. No, he got loose. Something, wow. something happened to that car. It jumped out the way it went. Way before, I thought the 12 maybe got into him, but it was well before that. Creeping the brake balance to the back and just got too much and wheel hopped it. Kyle Busch on the inside, Joey Logano on the outside. Yeah, and we're back to green. So their nose at their pole. Ten laps to the mid race break. That may have played a role in him choosing that outside. The fact that there's only 10 laps, and there you go, you see him get to the bottom. Here comes William Byron on the outside against Haley for third. And I don't think any of us thought when we came out here that the that you would actually have a two wide racetrack, let alone we've seen three wide today and just to be able to see guys on these restarts be able to hang on like they have. It, it's every bit as good as what we see at, at a place like Martinsville on the schedule. Front five single file, the race is for six. Ryan Blaney, Austin Dillon, the 12 and the three. Big slip up right there for the 22 of Joey Logano if you're Kyle Busch. I think the key to that is exactly what you said. The center of the corner is the key point of this. He can get in the corner because it turns so good in the center. Oh, I mean, he, he big gave him shot. a shot. Big shot. He's digging here inside by himself three. And Logano goes to the front. Kyle Busch to second. Let's see if he gets around back to it. Staying in the front. I was going to let him have it. And the caution is out. Tom. Timing is everything. Yeah. We are midway in the Bush Light Clash at the Coliseum. Full car length back on the interior three. Big shot. <laughs> I'm coming in. I think that's well played, to be honest. I mean, 75 laps to go. Here's the restart green. single file right away. Logano to the bottom inside William Byron who pushed up the racetrack. Second place the battle. Might have pushed up because of the PM yeah. car. <laughs> <laughs> exactly how I saw it. But it's time. And like I said, the gloves are off. You've got to go. Here look comes at this. Larson, Larson to the inside, inside three wide. 
Larson, open behind, that was closed up, closed up now, still there. The race is on now. This has already started way different than the first half of this race. These guys are already leaning on each other, trying to get every ounce they can get right out of the gate. And that gap is gone. Yes. Logano is, is there. And traffic just ahead. It's like Iceberg dead ahead. There they are, clogging up both lanes. Truex, Burton, so and Wallace. And this is good old-fashioned short track race. And who can get through lap traffic the best? That's going to be your winner here tonight. Shut the door. Joey's not waiting either. He's going to take any opportunity he can. I like what he did there. Got the lap in. car. Yeah, caught the lap car, Bubba Wallace. And now the front three are nose to tail. Use him as a pick, so to speak. And that's what you do. That's that cat and mouse games that we have, you know, at your exposure or your expense, excuse me, on these short tracks like a quarter mile bouldering. Kyle Busch's lead is gone. Lap traffic right ahead. Martin Truex, then rookie Harrison Burton. He's got to find a way by before Logano gets alongside. Twelfth car's got trouble here on the bottom of the racetrack. Ryan Blaney off pace to the inside. Will try to make the sharp turn into the pit lane. Caution is out. Not yeah, safe yellow, to make yellow, that yellow. turn under green. It's almost a stop and go to get into the infield there. So wisely, NASCAR throws the caution. Huge if you're Kyle Busch right there. What a break that is for him. And Ryan Blaney in the 12 here. We well, got into the wall, the outside wall, pretty hard there after the contact, obviously. So we got some fireworks over here. Ryan Blaney just took off his Hans device, ran past me and threw it at the 43. We had some contact out there, Ryan. We don't see you lose your cool very often, but what happened between the two of you? Oh, he wants to destroy me for seventh. Don't really make no sense, so I don't know. Uh, just kind of riding around and hey, just running back of you. Killed our car, so yeah, I was bad, but uh, do have that. It's short track racing, Mike. I'm afraid so. Kyle Bush knows that, and here they come to the Geico restart zone. And Bush fires off half a car length lead going into one, and Logano evens that up. Kyle Larson looked to the bottom, nothing there. Haley gets in line, gets a boot from Byron, still side by side for the lead. Oh. And into the wall goes Haley. Caution is out. As you don't he see that and very Larson, often. Haley and Larson had repeated contact racing for third. Larson didn't like him getting under him. He, he hit him in the rear, knocked him up out of the track, got under him, and, and he destroyed the, the left front of Haley's car. Sure. That's. This is exactly what we talked about earlier. It wasn't necessarily started with him. It started with the car behind him. He got in line. William Byron got in the back of him. Nothing. Shoved nothing him up into the five. The five thought he was retaliating. Exactly. Put him into the wall. When it. off these corners if you want to beat one of these guys for the win. By the way, Ryan Blaney got his Hans device back. He is